everyone, this is Anka Metcalf with Trade Out Loud, and this is the Futures Market Outlook for the week starting with today, June 2nd, 2019. Currently, it's 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time when I'm doing this analysis. So we have a few more hours to the open, and uh, I believe it's going to be a uh, pressure open. Uh, let's take first let's take a look at some charts monthly chart we have a brand new monthly candle that will start being generated at 6 p.m eastern and uh, we also have about two weeks until the rollover in the futures indices all right so here we have last month trading activity and this is may solid red bar no wigs very very solid red bar very weak bar however this very weak bar as you can see from the monthly chart it is trading still trading on support level this is actually the support level generated by uh, this prior high trigger point that was last year in april and it generated a rally so um, now it is trading on minor support generated by this prior high and is trading on the 20 simple moving average it is also trading on a weekly 89 simple moving average so it does have some support from that area as well so as you can see we uh we closed at 24805 on friday and uh, there is still some uh, potential retaliation from China uh, today. So we will see how that is going to pan out in price action at the open. All right, so with that being said, monthly red bar, what we can expect so far is that if this level is not going to hold, we may see some more selling pressure taking the price back down into the next level of support of 24016. All right, let's move on to the weekly chart. The weekly chart, as you can see, these last four bars, these last four weeks were rather weak we cannot but notice that the week of may 13th we attempted a doji with no reversal at this point so no reversal so we came in we tested the 50 simple moving average we worked on this reversal yet this reversal uh came with uh did not come and we uh had more selling pressure from the 10 exponential moving average pressing the price back lower into the week into actually last week's price action activity so as you can see right now where i'm holding my cursor into this 24800 level to the left hand side we do have a big chunk of support level so a uh, very weak uh, candle expressed here on the weekly chart so going into next week if we break this 800 level we still have a lot of room for lower at least into the 24 a uh, thousand and this is again this is on a weekly chart so let's take it let's take it a step closer onto the daily chart as you could see right here and we analyzed this into the trading room last week and we noticed the selling pressure coming in and we noticed the reaction actually from these uh uh, from these candles and from the pressure that they had from the 10 exponential moving average and that's not all I'm going to share with you some uh, uh, we're going to zoom in on the four hour chart and I can show you some weakness that has stepped into these indices earlier in the earlier this week that was a sign of possible reversal at this point but nonetheless we're still we were still trading on sport here until Wednesday into the 25200 level. We breached this level. We quickly rotated back up and then we had a very flat Thursday. You could see it right here. Very, very flat Thursday. And then we had a pr the, the bear pressure right here that pushed the price lower below 25040, kicking it all the way into this support level at the 24800 support level that is deriving from these prior highs back in january you could see this uh, cluster right here that is uh 24300 by 24800 this is the cluster from where we had the rally this is the base 
This is the range that was developed between uh, January 18th and January 30th. Uh, and we did propel higher from that point. So we will have to see how we digest the 24800 area moving forward. Just want to put the four hour chart yet uh, chart up because there is some important information that this time frame is uh, is actually providing. I'm going to put a little bit more data here. All right. So what we had going on here is that we fell below this, we, we breached this support level right here, okay? So price action came in, it pretty much topped right here into the 25,950. We have one top, two tops, three tops. This is a lower top right here. And again, we had rejection from these, uh, from these lows into uh into this price action uh derived at the 920 to 950 level so once we had these tops develop the price slid lower as you can see was following the 20 sma got extended uh price popped a little bit into the uh into the 20 hovered here popped a little bit higher and then again we stabilized here into this minor resistance level at the 900, 900 to 950 area. If we would have blasted above 950, 26,000 would have been the next target and then we would have regained back the momentum for higher price trajectory. But no, we have stabilized at this, uh, at this level into the 950. We had a lot of clues that the price may be able to continue higher because we did have some trend, uh, some trend reversal confirmation. We have the bottoming effect. We have the higher low, higher low, and the uh, actually the third higher low from the bottoming effect. So anything over 950 should have projected higher back into the 26K and more. Uh, however, the price got rejected at this point. It started to gyrate and it became very unstable, breached the first area of support by very little. It rounded back again into, uh, into these highs, back into the 900 again, respecting the higher trajectory. And then it got rejected again. The first time around, we did not hold the support level. However, we had the secondary support level into the 320 we navigated back up and as you could see here the price went above this minor resistance area into the 540 pushing the price higher but then again we had the flat 50 simple moving average here that created a lot of selling pressure on price and uh triggered the price lower take a look at this down day we had one two three four five six seven candles to the downside these are four hour candles by the way so it was an entire overnight trading it was definitely a new york trading session and an overnight trading session asian and a uh, european trading session that pushed the price lower definitely uh kicking this 25 200 this low right here right out creating a new low now one thing that i want to show you is that from this thursday and this is the two thursdays two th past two thursdays so we had the rotation that came to the upside notice that this was one of the last four hour reversals that we had going on into the market the, uh, and then uh into uh the dow and then the price got kicked back down and for the duration of these five trading sessions, we have not had a four hour reversal. This is the first clue that the market was beginning to be, was, was the beginning of a very weak market environment. We have the reversal right here that was pulled right into the 10 exponential moving average, and then it reversed back again and it brought the price back down to where it is right now. So as you could see right here, Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday, we did get a little bit of flat momentum indicating that we may have, uh, uh, we we may actually start to continue higher, but then you can see this bar right here on the four hour. This was again, a massive release, a sell. And this is the Mexico tariff uh, push down right here. So we had one, two, three, four, five candles to the downside. Friday, we ended on a low note. We have attempted to go a little bit higher. We were looking at 
um, uh, some reversals uh, into the five minute and the 15 minute, et cetera, et cetera, in the indices, more precisely in the M&E S&P, uh, which worked, uh, but it wasn't, uh, this is the reversal right here, okay, in the morning and then the afternoon, we continued to slide sideways. One hour chart, well, we're gonna have to wait for the open on Sunday because, uh, and today actually, uh, because this is going to be, uh, I expect either a gap up or a gap down. So we're gonna talk both of uh, uh, both scenarios here. Okay, so as you can see, this is a pretty flat Friday trading session uh, with established support into the 850 before we slid lower into the end of the trading session and we do have resistance at the 25,000. So as you could see here from this chart and from these candlesticks, the ranges are again very, very, very wide. Okay, so they're very wide. Um, this again may be a good option to uh you know to trade the micros having in, having you know these really really wide if you have a smaller trading account size then you could definitely top on that uh and this is because of the very wide ranges so if we should gap up above 25,000 we can expect a higher trajectory into the next confluence area of 25050 25 100 and back into these highs of 25 162 170. if we gap lower and i'm going to zoom here again and i'm gonna uh i'm i'm going to shrink this chart and actually move it back to the four hour chart and give it a little bit more time here okay so if we should break this level of support here we may accelerate lower and the price target for for a continuation lower is going to be into the 24,523. Okay, so it is going to be a little bit steeper. And then going into this first week of June, um, again, we don't have a lot of economic releases uh, for you know at, at least in the first two days. Uh, things are going to, you know, develop as we're going into um, the core of the week uh, with some unemployment numbers, etc. cetera. Uh, but definitely we will have to uh, consider a further, um, you know, possibly a further continuation lower and an easing out of the rally that we had onto the daily um, obviously that we have starting with December 26th. I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to also present uh, some uh, alternate support levels that are present on the charts. Uh, first off, the Dow first retracement is into the 24,700 and this is the 38.2 Fib. And this is again the support level that is coinciding. Again, it's a key level. Uh, because it is coinciding also with this prior cluster that we spoke about um, earlier in this uh, in this video uh, when we went over the daily chart. So, should we breach uh, this 700 level? I think that there's still room for uh, 25,500, like I mentioned, and also room lower for uh, 24,300 and back into the 24,124. Okay, so let's keep an open mind because if this level is not going to hold and if we're not going to see a reversal here, I don't think things are going to move our way. And the first uh, thing that I will watch moving forward is going to be this four hour reversal. Should we get a four hour reversal in the indices? There may be uh, there may be a short covering rally, a relief rally from uh, from Friday or it may be the start of something that may push the market higher, but we'll see. Um, there are a lot of contradicting uh, elements on the charts, so most definitely the monthly chart and the weekly chart, they're still in uptrends. It is the lower time frames that are pushing the price lower, and definitely it is the narrative that we're getting. Um, and uh, the market definitely is reacting based on this narrative. 
and uh, usually the price you know is the uh, only element that we should follow in this case and uh, we should take it one day at a time again uh, as far as swing trades there are uh, some relative strength stocks out there that uh, and anyways that I'm watching one of them is Disney just uh, ju I, I just remember the pattern on it and there, of course there are a lot of uh, a lot of Microsoft etc but that's a different topic um, and uh, if we see some relative strength going into stocks perhaps we will have a big uh, influx of positive positivity going into the indices as well all right let's continue with the mini smp and we're gonna do a quicker analysis monthly chart back into the 20 simple moving average if uh, the 2750 level is not going to hold then we can see lower price action at least into the 2600 so we have a lot of room to the downside for the mini smp daily chart daily chart you can see that it violated the 200 simple moving average we do have support from prior price action back in 308 into the 2725 so if the price is not going to recover into the 2725 level it has room from 50 to 25 and then 25 is going to be the decision point again the line in the sand and if we don't reverse off of this point we can see actually a breach off of this support level sliding into the 27 and into the 2600 uh, back again all right let's move on to nasdaq and uh, nasdaq there we go all right let's take it way out there onto the monthly chart because we did have the close into the 7137 right into the 10 exponential moving average and also into this minor uh and it's also trading into minor resistance deriving from this prior high from march of uh of 2018. so if we don't hold this area the next stop is going to be 69.75 let's take it one step down to the monthly chart you could see the full trajectory lower within the last four weeks and we're trading right now into minor support level deriving from these prior highs right here like i said from back in 2018 in march if we don't hold off, off of the, these levels and also this prior pivot high right here december 3rd uh and if we do not resolve this area and try to hook and push higher there may be uh there may be lower price targets the first target that i see is the 20 is the 6950 area on a potential reversal and again remember we closed very weak typically if we close this week right if we close weak uh, we may not see a, a, an immediate recovery so price may still continue to slide lower before it balances out and uh, it really uh, tries to reverse uh, on another note notice that the weekly volume is descending so the last uh, the last four weeks one two three four you could see that the pro uh, the volume has been des declining so it, it we're into a lower volume slide as well all right the daily chart let's uh, move to the daily chart right now the daily chart like i said before is still coiling at this 200 simple moving average right here we do have alternate support into the 69 60 and 69 50 level and we're going to see how that's going to plan out i also want to take out the fib tool for an additional support level and we are approaching as well the 38.2 level right here into the 7100 so if we don't hold and reverse off of this level i said you know we may actually slide a little bit lower uh we're gonna look for clues one day at a time remember that these reversals start from smaller time frames and they start going to larger time frame so any clues from the 15 30 minute one hour four hour charts are going to be very indicative as uh what future price action is going to um uh, uh to do all right russell let's take it way out there to the monthly chart you could see it right here we had a move up and reversal it was one of the weakest indices that has created a monthly sell setup into the 15 
42, however, it, it was still up trending. However, it was one of the weakest indices because it has not made a new high. Notice that we had a new high in the Nas in NASDAQ. We had a new high in the S&P. We have not made a new high or established a new high into Russell. So here it is. We are having, we're trading into this prior low right here into the 1457. Let's take it a bit up to the weekly chart one two three four bars to the downside after this move to the upside that uh i did comment as an inverse head and shoulder at this point over 1600 and potential run up into the 1650 and it did not happen we had the rotation back down we have reached the first level of support into the 1595 and we slid lower here back into this support level at the 14, uh, 1450, uh, 1450 zone. Now take a look back and see how this level, every time the price has been trading into the 1450, it bounced. Take a look back. We came into the uh, 1450 zone. We bounced back up. We came into the 1450, 1460. We bounced back up before we collapsed and then we rallied again. Let's take it a, a step, uh, a, a, one more step back. Remember last year in November? Bam! What is the area that it bounced from? 1450. We had a mini rally. And the price came back again. And remember the, of the volatility. Uh, the volatility from February. Well, here it is. Volatility from February tested the 1450 area, actually slid into the 1450 and rally back up. And then we had it here again into the 1460 and back up again. So again, this 1450 is going to be seen as an area of support. Uh, just want to take it back to the daily chart. Let's do some fibs here as well for additional uh, confirmation of possible bounce zones. And this is the high. So uh, as a common denominator, most of the indices were holding the 38.2. Well, we slid below the 38.2 and we're approaching that 50 level, which is the 50% retracement right here. So again, to me, that 50 is going to have a big significance because if the price is not going to recover into the 50 and it's, if it's not going to try to reach a, a, a resolution here and reverse, we may see lower targets of at least 50 points lower back into the 1400s. All right, let's take a quick peek at crude and see how crude has been trading this week and also this month. So let's take it back down to the monthly chart and I'm gonna leave the fibs here. Uh, and uh, here's what I see. Uh, a lot of support into the $43. We basically uh, uh, popped from, and, and it, the um, um, crude was in sync, uh, trading in sync with the market. We had weak, uh, weak crude this week and the market uh, was in sync with crude as well. Uh, when we had the reversal that came in uh, the last week of uh, December uh, of last year, gold started to reverse as, as well and it had one, two, three, four months of really uh, nice rally going on and we're back into the minor support level. $53 is minor support level. Look to the left hand side. Look at these highs right here. These highs right here are creating a shelf of support for current price action. Uh, let's uh, zoom into the weekly chart. We had two very, very weak, uh, two very weak weeks. <laughs> okay. And we had the doji. We had the reversal where we were pretty much holding this area $61, $60 were support. And the pop-up was above $63, very wide range for this. Uh, so we're still seeing a bit of volatility, increased volatility in crude here. Uh, so we had a failed buy set up off of this level right here. And it was a nice level to pop from, but the price got rejected and the price came back down. Now, I'm going to be watching the 5250 level for a potential re reversal at this point. We have a lot of elements that may signal a buy off of these levels. First one is the 61.8% FIB. The second one is the 200 simple moving out average uh, that you can see right here onto the 
the chart. Uh, and also we have these prior lows. So there are three elements that are pointing to, uh, to a potential shift uh, in crude into the 52.50 level. All right, let's move on to gold. And this is the last commodity that we're going to be reviewing today. Monthly chart, it is setting up for a pullback buy, a uh, buy setup. Uh, and the trigger is coming into the 1315. So 1315 is going to be the trigger for higher. The risk for the longer term trade is uh, 1260, under 1267. And the target, first target is going to be actually into these highs of the 1349, 1350 area. The high of this range right here is the 1349.8. We actually took advantage of a trade here into this, uh, into this high. Pullback, we've had, uh, we have three months of pullback. Uh, and uh, we ended uh, we ended May on a high note with a really nice pop that actually uh, it all started last two trading sessions of May. So very nice pullback by off the moving averages, off support doji. So it has a lot of positive elements uh, that can potentially push the market a little bit. Uh, higher here. All right, the weekly chart. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart finally cleared out all this mess to the left hand side. We had one, two, three, four, five, six weeks of total mess to the left hand side. We haven't traded gold at all, we just left it alone. Uh, and finally, we made a, a small pop here into the end uh, into the end of the month. Last two trading days of the month was ve were very strong. So you can see here, Thursday, we managed to trade above these prior highs, uh, breaking the 93 level, pushing a little bit higher into the 94, and finally erasing the resistance from these prior highs right here. Uh, into the 1296 level, pushing higher, and as you can see here, th uh, 13, uh, 1310 uh, breached. Next target, 1320. This is these are smaller targets along the way to the bigger target into the 1350. Um, so as you can see here, uh, back into the 1320. Uh, that is the next target, and we're looking at a 1340 level and up. So very nice close uh, going back to the monthly chart. Very nice close here, reversal and at the point of trigger just in time. We're gonna have to wait and see how Sunday's gonna uh, Sunday's gonna pan out and going into the next session. But definitely this is uh, this is the buy. Also highlighted in the trading room uh, that uh, this is a breakout potential uh, at the thirteen oh four level with the risk into the 1299, it carried higher and then it formed, we also talked about this in the trading room, at a 15 minute reversal into the 305 by risk of three, uh, 304. So very nice patterns developing uh, in gold. Gold may be also on watch for potential day trades moving forward since it's out of its clustery mess from the weekly chart, we can actually see some pretty organized price action if the mo if the momentum is going to remain sustained. All right, guys, this is all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget that we will have an open house this week. And if you would like to hear more about the open house, it is on um, June 6th. If you want to register, just look below right here and click the link and register. We begin at nine o'clock. It's gonna be from nine o'clock till four o'clock. You will witness our market analysis. You're gonna um, see firsthand how we call trade, how we handle trade, how we trade and how we do everything out loud. Uh, we, uh, I call the trades. Um, I take the trades, obviously, and uh, I manage them in real time out loud in my account and also for the members in our trading room. If you're also interested in learning more on how to trade futures, and if you want to become a futures day and swing trader, we have a brand new class that will start on June 17th. It's from June 17th to June 21st. It is a five day comprehensive, super intense class. We will teach you everything that you need to know 
to start your career into the futures trading field. And this class is followed by 30 days mentoring with me, live trading lab with me. And then you'll have the option to join us in the trading room as well. If you want more information on that, look below. Click on the link, tradeoutloud.com for slash futures, learn more about the class. And if you want more information, you can email us at info at tradeoutloud.com and we'll send you the full class curriculum along with a lot of trading education uh, details. And uh, also remember that with this class, you have the option to become a professional independent trader. Even this class and also this class is addressed for uh, advanced traders as well as beginner traders. So it is a class developed for all trading levels. If you have been trading unsuccessfully for a period of time, two to three years, five years, it's time you do something about it. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll be in the trading room starting tomorrow, nine o'clock. So if you wish to join our trading room, the, all, the link is also below. Thanks so much, guys. And I hope you have a really profitable trading week ahead. Looking forward to hearing from you in the live online open house this Sunday, th this, uh, I'm sorry, this June 6th on Thursday. Have a great day, everyone.